Welcome back, my little recusants, to another episode of Final Fantasy XIII. We are continuing with our Titans trials, hopping up and along, going back through the different uh, missions till we get to new ones. So, yeah, there's just going to be an awful lot of uh, fights this go round. But uh, we're now going to B2, and then we're going to go C2, D2, and up along like that. But this one's brand new to us, and once again, don't forget that you're able to get Platinum Ignis from grinding with the Adamantoises when you're looking for traps the Hedrons for your ultimate weapons. But even without Deceptisols, because I'm going to say farm Deceptisols with those Platinum Ignits. But even without, you are able to preemptive strike enemies. Get quickly to like your Hempless Assault so you don't absolutely waste <laughs> the um, opportunity of the extra damage. And with your two Ravengers doing all the AoE damage they can, we get a handy 5 star. Because realistically... Once you preemptive, that's how you get the five stars when you're at this level um, of strength, really. So, again, that's this one done. But don't forget that you're able to go fight the Adam and Toises and get the chance to get Trapsahedrons to get ultimate weapons. I do all that off screen, but as I say, you can check the previous video, it shows you how to just use the summons to basically get by and allow yourself to either get trapezohedrons or get what's the word platinum magnets to sell for a bunch of deceptisols and with those deceptisols you can get the pm strikes and get those five stars namely with the very first guy you need a Deceptisol because you can't preemptively strike him, which is very frustrating. But here we have a normal Ochu, and realistically, I hop over to Hope purely because he can then cast in fire. And once we have all of everyone on Synergist, we're going to be getting lots of really good buffs from Vanille and Fang, and we just want Vanille uh, to be casting Protector and stuff. So that way, Fang will prioritize her offensive abilities. And once Hope's put fire on everybody, just watch how Fang melts through these uh, little Ochus and then the bigger Ochu as well. Like, it's absolutely insane. And now that we've gotten rid of all the different uh, micro Ochus, we can basically... Um, just pepper him with attacks. Now, Pollen is a bit of a danger, but since we've had Veil vale up, we are quite lucky in that we don't get really stung with anything too, too major. And we can just keep on the assault, and then just spam Fyraga, so we can just absolutely obliterate the little mi micro juice. And that is the fight completely five-starred. Hope you guys enjoyed. You get a good amount of EXP and you get um, moon Star Blossom Seeds, I believe. Well, sorry, I think you get Star Blossom Seeds when you repeat it a second time. But that's that mission done. And again, I hope you guys find these episodes interesting like they're fun to do when like you're doing the different missions and you're trying to get the five stars but when it comes to commentating i'm like i don't know do i just say have your strategies and just have your strong stats and just paradigm shift effectively and have deceptisols so you can um get by okay and yeah some of the areas are a bit larger, so it can be tricky just to walk around and get to your mark. But um, once again, let's just get some end fire and haste on everybody. Seemed to work well the last time. And again, once you get that on kind of fang and hope and everyone has haste, we can kind of then just go nuts with the uh, 
attacks, but you are better off doing the single attacks because realistically you get interrupted by these goblins so often that like that your faragas, your bigger burst damages, they're gonna go they're gonna go missing. You're gonna get knocked out of them unless you vigilance. Which unless you do or unless you buff way more, you're not gonna have the time or energy to do all of that. But again, I'm not if anything else gonna be dissuaded. <laughs> When they're kind of focusing down on Fang, we kind of know we have the time and the energy to uh, get rid of them. But they stagger really quickly, so like once you single target them down, Fang launches them, it's really game over. And like all the fire effects, they are just getting destroyed. And this is the problem, if you don't take them out quickly enough, they then just get buffed by every single enchantment under, under the sun, you know? Um, but once we keep hammering home the fire... <laughs> we're able to launch it in the air, and that's the beginning of the end then. As I say, it's not that we're ever going to actually lose these fights. We're never going to be overpowered by the enemy to the point where we're going to actually like have a game over. By these ones at least. But it's just the frustration of are we quick enough to actually get the five stars? We are, and 35,000 is not a small amount, guys. So, again, we're really, between this and the Traps of Hedron Hunting, we are not going to be wanting for experience points. We are going to be getting those levels super quick. Going now to E2 on Silent Wings, I make an absolute shambles of this boss fight. <laughs> I basically think I have to rely on Vanille's death mechanic, similar to what I had to do to rely on that with the Ochu encounter. And the short answer is I really didn't. I really didn't. I should have just used Mystic Tower to have Fang or one of the characters take all the aggro. Our Ravengers could have been debuffing and building the stagger and whatever. And then once it was staggered, we just changed to like Commando Commando Ravenger and do tons of damage. But as you guys can see, we basically have like such a high amount of EXP just from running through those couple of fights. So it really is a handy way, I suppose, of just getting your levels, getting your Crystarium filled up because we need to finish this Crystarium for every character in order to get the Master Seal achievement. And I suppose what can be very useful, at least for the purposes of Saz and even the other characters, um, I tend to focus Synergist just because getting buffs really early tends to be the the big solution But there's a lot to also be said about the fact that Getting characters to higher role levels. So for example using Saz's um, Christian points to basically get him to level three in all of his subclasses. I Mean there's there's something to be said for having a character with an extra role level than not, you know We're just, again, looking through all of our different weapons and our different accessories, and I'm saying to myself, okay, what exactly do I want to be doing? And basically, we're just gonna have an L check and see if we have any transformation catalysts, and we do indeed. The Hot Claire turned into Durandal, Gladius as well. Turn into the Helter Skelter. So really, if you're collecting different transformation catalysts, just if you have everything, all the level one or the tier one weapons to their star rank, just collect a bunch of um, transformation catalysts and see which ones can transform. Now, one of Saz's weapons, the one that gives the stagger maintenance, the way it slows down slowly, like you get stagger for longer, basically. Um. That one you will need to have Dark Matters for. You won't get that to transform without the Dark Matters. So just to be aware of that.
Now, I delib I'm i so raging that I then pivoted because this guy does so many debuffs, it is actually unbelievable. So I then just put the whole gang into this whole part. This whole paradigm of sentinels and synergists and medics just to try and use death spam. And death spam was not the plan. It basically made me wander around here for way, way too long trying to get death to work. And I end up with zero stars, basically. So I'm not going to have you guys sit here for the length of time that I was sitting here trying to get this bloody strategy to work. But as you can see, he just debuffs everything and just implants debuffs all the time. So we need the Sentinel just to draw all that aggro, just to have him be debuffing one person. And if we're even able to simply put on like Veil and a deep protect ward and a slow protection and poison protection, like, if we can just make one person basically immune to all of their different attacks, we can then just focus on putting on debuffs, getting it to stagger, because look at this. Like, the thing, stagger bar, is nearly, like, a fifth full, and it's only on, like, 1.1. So we can definitely be doing a lot better by just putting on all these different debuffs on the enemy. And once that's on, like, realistically, it should have just been a get it to stagger. Once it's staggered, we can start attacking it while it's in the air and it'll get stunned. And we have D protect and D shell on it. We can probably do, like, loads of damage really, really quickly. But no, I opted for death spam. And it took forever. I was healing constantly, trying to put on like healing paradigms to like heal off all the debuffs like i was putting on synergist plans to sim to like get buffs on but the buffs weren't sticking because i kept on dispelling them and eventually after like five minutes i get it done we unlock a very important shop gilgamesh inc we need to buy everyone's weapon like when we went back to the checklist all of the weapons you're missing are purchasable in Gil Gilgamesh Inc. So we need to save up money for that as well. So we are buying Decepticals. We are buying the Gilgamesh weapons. And we are trying to get through these Titanic trials. And you guys are lucky. I'm literally cutting out all the repeated attempts of like bloody A1. We have to do A1 so often. And now B2 so often. <laughs> But it has to be done. We have to like make it. And again, whenever you get your big uh, crystal gem points dropped from the big enemy, just move yourself along. Try and get those roll levels up. And again, yeah, we kind of did everything up till D2 and then went to, you know, E2. And now we can go to E3. And another thing that I don't do, but like in hindsight it makes so much better sense, just make a save there. And then if you don't get five stars, just restart the, the game. Reload the game from there and try a different strategy and then you don't have to go through the entire thing all over again. So that's an option that, you know, my clear editing of like my shameful death run with Vanille. I was like, I left that in, but really what I should have done was reload, been like, actually, that was a terrible plan. Cut all that out and post and not share it with you so you guys wouldn't know I'm a silly goose that, that doesn't plan well. But I said, no, we are having an authentic run here. And sometimes you get zero stars because you have zero creativity and you do not get by on bad strategy when trying to like you know figure out how to beat a boss having said all of that i could have also cast death in the first 10 seconds of the fight and it could have insta died so you know there's an element of luck 
as well as legitimate tactical prowess. But this guy, we've already fought this guy before. He puts up his little barrier, and we have to try and break the barrier. And yeah, we kind of had all this stuff already. I don't know why I was there libring. But anyway, we definitely want Shell. Definitely put up Shell. Because by God, does he love to throw out uh, different magical spells. But yeah, get your buffs on Fang, because Fang is always the one that's going to be doing all of the damage. She's just so, so strong. Don't underestimate two rank five medics though. Those cures are doing absolute work. And now, so long as, well, I was gonna say, so long as Fang's and Sentinel, she'll only get targeted by the, the magic. But we managed to get the, the stagger and now it's just a case of getting hope and keeping him refreshed that he uh, builds the stagger because realistically we're not going to build the stagger super high but even with the stagger only mildly built we are melting through all of its hp And now we see multitasking Dispel and Slows and all that chaos. Luckily the slow didn't land. But yeah, just keep up the offensive. Do not let that shield recover. If you let the shield recover, you are losing your five stars. Come on. Come on. And Hope just steal, kill stealing there. Sniping in with the arrow. And again, 50k, like nothing to, to sniff at. That's really like a direct level. And a nice Minar stone as well. And the Titan's like, well done guys, high five. And you're like, please no Titan, you are literally ginormous. We cannot high five you, you will kill us all. But back we pop. And now our plan is going to be A1, E2, and so on and so forth we go. But here is Gilgamesh Inc. And we basically have to buy the Dragoon Lance, the Tiger Claw, the Mathis, all those bloody, really expensive, expensive, expensive weapons. But the good news is that basically two Platinum Magnets will see us through. So we just fight the two Adamant Toises and all the little Adamant Cheddars, and we end up with enough money for definitely at least one weapon, if not one and a half weapons, you know? But at the moment, I'm literally just looking along and I'm saying, I just want some Decepticals. So I literally sell all those bomb cores because when you repeat all those missions, you get five bomb cores. So that's how I ended up with like 40 something of them. And once we use our L Decepticals, for this little enemy here. We end up finally getting um, the mission done really, really quickly. Mission complete. A zealot's amulet and onward and onward we go. And what's handy is that even in the mini map, it'll have little glowing areas where it's like, oh yes, we haven't uh, we haven't done this before. And so like that, we're now going from C3 to D3 and then up to E4 and E5. 
So again, once you've kind of seen these once, it's like, yeah, you got to trek through them again and again and again and again. But all in all, it's maybe two hours of work when you're at this stage of levels and level grinding and everything. Again, would have been so much easier if we had a Deceptisol. I feel like that's what this episode should be called. The the <laughs> the pr the cons of having no Deceptisols. But it's very hard because like you're spe it's like what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on getting all your weapons and accessories done? Are you wanting to five star everything? In which case, just spend all your money on a bunch of Deceptisols and do all the missions. And try your best to just max that out. But for me anyway, the hope is that we're able to get through, get the five stars as easy as possible. And I will leave in repeats. I kind of was thinking back on it and I'm like, if people are really stuck, they might want to see how the boss fight happens. But I feel like it's nearly insulting because once you can decept us all the fight for most of these like mob fights that aren't these big, big bosses, you just mow through them in like 10 seconds. And it's like, I'm really glad I like recorded that 10 second fight for you guys to be spliced together in a video. But having said that, I don't want someone to say... I had to go to a different guide because you didn't show mission whatever five starring and I only saw you four star it in the video. So, you know, it's tricky. I want to like give the guide and I suppose just put my money where my mouth is and being like, oh, it's so easy to do this. As if there was any doubt. But like at the same time. Just do what I'm doing on screen for these guys, even without the PM to strike, and we're still getting five stars. So, you know, what do I know? <laughs> and I end up going to E5 instead of E4, so sorry for breaking that sequence. <laughs> But once we finish up this little guy, I shouldn't say little guy, he is massive. But that's going to be the episode done. And that's basically nearly all of the Titans trials. We just have, I think, E4, because we're doing E5 now. And we've kind of done everything up till E4. And then it's just, yeah, D4 and D5. It's just those last three. So there's actually going to be three, well, no, I might as well, I can spoil it now. There's basically four more trials that are going to be recorded. It's going to be the one at the very end, the E D4 one. And then we're going to do, we're going to then do D5 and D6. And then once you've all the base ones covered, we then unlock a special 70th one. That's basically versus a big evil seat. And we have to beat that one. But for this mission, we want to, again, buff everybody up. It would have probably been better to even have Fang on also Synergist, where she would have probably given us Bravera and Faithra, and we would have been finished all the more quickly. But however, bravery and faith from lightning is going to just have to do. And once we have the in-spark, you know, the extra electrical damage, and we've all that jazz, now it's time to absolutely eviscerate. And the really funny thing is the Centurion Blade actually does a good bit of damage. So we want to kind of just wipe that out first. And that was really quick and easy. And now we're gonna just get this to stagger as quickly as possible. But like, look, even without stagger, just the fact that we have bravery and in spark on, we're still melting through this boss. And then you kind of go, okay, let's actually just go to Commando, Commando Rav. 
and we didn't even properly get it to proper stagger before taking it out. Netting us five stars and ending our episode. So I'll talk to you guys next time for us finishing the Titans Trials. Talk to you next time. Bye bye. Treasure